for love once more. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> yeah, I like that because it, <laughs> it's like what we're dealing with in, in real life. I mean, uh, don't eat that. It's an onion. It's an apple. No, it's an onion. No, it's an apple. I want it. No, look, it's good. I I like my mask. Really, I, know, I do. COVID is real. Uh, I really like my mask. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we looked for a baby with a nail gun video, but we couldn't find any. Aww. <laughs> that would have been cute. Yeah, that would have been hilarious. <laughs> that would have been adorable. Oh, yeah. Babies with nail gun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so welcome to Bookmark. Yeah, welcome to Bookmark. Um, the, 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 the talk show that, that feels like you're talking to your woke friends uh, in your own liber living room. Right, or which theirs. you are. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what people have told us, so that's right. cool. Well, so like there's this, well, did you know that there's this, like, um, there's this conversation going around about people who do their podcasts in front of bookshelves are being pretentious? <laughs> well, okay, but this is the best corner in our house. I know, right? Everything else is like, <laughs> we're not sure you would want to see it. Uh, well, no, I mean, there are, I mean, you there's, know, there's okay things. It's like paintbrushes and yeah, um, um, dusty yeah. shelves. <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. awesome uh, house cleaning. Uh, there's, no, there's, there's, uh, there's a brick... Um, Fireplace. We could have a fake fire, I suppose. Yeah, we don't have a working fireplace. Yeah, it's not real. But it's it's a hole. It's a fire. It used to be a fireplace, but now. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I think our bookshelf is okay. Like, first so of all, so who's saying it's pretentious? Well, not to us specifically, but this is like because everybody is online now and nobody has a life anymore. Right. People are always on uh, on doing their podcasts, and so a lot of people do these like do these podcasts in front of um, fake fake backgrounds with right. big bookshelves. Like it's apparently it's like an option when you're in Zoom or whatever, yeah. you, or whatever uh, program you <laughs> use or whatever feature you use. Right. You know, they have one that's like the ocean or bookshelf. Well, I've, I've seen and those so on like, yeah. People choose bookshelf a lot. Yeah. Well, I've seen those on like um, UK column. They've got, you know, those, those backgrounds. Yeah. You know, but yeah. Um, they, what I like, <laughs> First, like, I, I, mean, like, I like it when people are in their like spare room and you can see like boxes, you know, like staples boxes in the back and, right. and like stacked up and, so we, and like random shit, <laughs> ironing board. <laughs> we're always like, we're always arguing about UK column because I think it's a real background because they're broadcasting out of Plymouth. Mm -hmm. And so you see the lighthouse behind them and you see the sea eagles and you see the people walking by and you see the ocean. I think it's a feed on some screens. <laughs> so he thinks it's fake, but I think no, it's real. No, I think real. it's real, but it's, I think it's a screen. Oh, it's a screen? Of what's going on out in Plymouth, on Plymouth Bay. Oh, okay, so it's from, yeah. they're not like sitting in front of the window with the ocean view behind them. I don't think so. That would be really expensive. I wish, that, that, I wish, that, I wish they probably. could have that, but yeah, probably would be um, yeah in their studio it'd probably be really expensive yeah probably yeah. I think that um, the, uh, the the it would be expensive <laughs> real estate yeah probably um, to yeah. have windows out on the bay like that yeah know, probably you know, yeah. because I think Bristol is or where they're located is it Plymouth 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 yeah. I think it's like Sausalito oh okay well you know? yeah that would be kind of expensive yeah. so I think what they have I think they have video feed um, 
So, right. you know, that, which, is, it, it, which is also equally cool. Right. If you think about, like, they're a news program and they've got, you know, that as their background. That's right. pretty cool, actually. Yeah. yeah. No, that is cool. So. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is our bookshelf. It's yeah, not a fake is, bookshelf. This is real. So I you, mean... You can, you can pull books out. I mean, and we're not being pretentious. I mean, if you really look at the books <laughs> that are on there, they're like children's books. <laughs> there's some children's books. I yeah, mean, and we're not trying to be like... Kidnapped. And, right. Uh, I mean, we're not trying to be anything. Like this Heidi. idea... <laughs> Heidi. Well, that was mine. Once. I know. Well, yeah. kidnapped, I think, was mine. I don't know. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So, I mean, you know, we're just... He built the shelves himself. Like, he put it in himself. Mm -hmm. He put, and there's other stuff on there. There's like toys and stuff. Yeah, like we're see. not trying to be pretentious. No, we're not. But apparently now people are <laughs> people are so bored. They're like scrutinizing scrutinizing yeah. the backgrounds of all the podcasters now. Mm, that's pretty funny. Um, back here is a is a is a Christmas cactus. See? Right, that's a Christmas cactus. <laughs> Sometimes okay. they bloom at, yeah. not at Christmas time. Well, some of them are Easter blooming, and some of them are spring blooming, and some mm. of them are winter blooming, or twice a year. So yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, so <laughs> on with the show. Yeah, <laughs> you're um, all in an insane asylum. <laughs> that's basically it. I mean, that's mm -hmm. probably also the the kid with the onion. It's like it's an apple. No, it's an onion. No, <laughs> it's an apple. No, it's an onion. It's yeah. an apple. I eat. Yeah, yeah. he's like, I'm gonna eat this apple. It's good for me. Yeah. You know, and he's just like so, pouring tears out of his face. I like wearing But that's what we're dealing with. So we're dealing with infants. We're right. dealing with people who don't have the intellect beyond like a three year old. Mm -hmm. You know, you could tell them everything and they would just be like, No, I'm gonna eat this onion. Yeah, because I think it's an apple. Because because, you know. Yeah. Um, because my teacher told me it's an apple, or my aunt, or the shopkeeper told me it's an apple, mm -hmm. even though it's an onion. Yeah. You know? I feel like we should do that. I feel like what we should do is we should go in with a mask on at, like, a grocery store and hold up a bag of bread and say, I want to buy this bag of oranges. And the shop person will say, no, that's bread. No, it's oranges. oranges. I want to buy this apple. That's a banana. No, it's an apple. You know, and just fuck with them. Just <laughs> fuckery all over the place. And just be like, I can't work with you if you're not going to be true. If you're not going to be honest with me. You know? Yeah. You're telling me that this thing that I'm holding <laughs> is a bag of apples. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's clearly yeah it's clearly like, absurdist theater right <laughs> so it would be absurd yeah totally absurd like that's what absurdist we should do. theater yeah like you're gonna have to start acting crazy and I think some people already are yeah I think some people Without, are are finally just over this they're, and they're just it turning it into like comic relief well maybe you know? um, or they're just crazy now because of you know or they've just become crazy they've become that's what I mean yeah, yeah. so speaking of Insane, insane asylums. asylums. Yeah. You took some video footage earlier today. I did. Yeah. Uh, you went out to downtown. I actually went outside. Wow. In the sun. It was actually sunny today. Sunny, blue um, skies. So I went getting, and chased some blue skies. I know, because now we're getting streaks in the sky again, because we just can't have enough sunlight. No. We're not um, allowed to have too much allowed, sun yeah, or no, too many blue skies. Or too much fun. Right. So Julie had some fun downtown. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's roll Ooh. this dystopic piece of <laughs> video. <laughs>
Okay. So tell us about your adventure. <laughs> well, it took all of, you know, five, ten minutes, but no, seriously, <laughs> like, my feeling about this is that this is what every city looks like now. So if you have a restaurant in a downtown area or in a neighborhood, that restaurant that you used to love to go to or that cafe isn't going to let you go inside anymore. You've got to sit in what looks like a hospital room. Mm -hmm. It's like a plastic tent that's pulled around you and it's it's got no... It's not fun. It's not pretty. It's like fold-out benches instead of an actual table and chair well, plastic, seating. Plastic tables. Plastic and... tables. It's basically this is it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Like this is it. This is the rest of your life. Like you're never going back inside unless you, you know, wear a mask, be told what to do. Well, even right now, you um, you have to wear a mask in those things. Inside those things, then why would you ever do it? Well, right, like, that's what I mean. Isn't that the whole point of having these things that no, look like hospital you have rooms? You to fucking wear a mask in those things too. Or health facilities no. outside of your... No. Restaurants isn't the whole point. Oh, I'm surprised they don't have fucking porter potties out there too. But well, don't give them any well, ideas, no, right? No, I'm serious. I mean, you know. so this is the rest of your life now. This is it. Mm-hmm. Like this is the rest well, of your life. We went to a, we went to a park in the autumn. It's an insane asylum. We went to a little park in the autumn um, when we were doing some shooting of like you know autumn leaves. Because um, we're Californians and we don't know what autumn leaves look like in the east. We so know what we they do. Look but like. we went out and did some shooting in, in the autumn and we went into this little park and um, they had the bathrooms closed, you know, near yeah. the playground. So, but instead they had porta potties, which is so much healthier and, and more, um, you know. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's... They don't want us being human anymore. Right, like, no. they seriously don't. So this is your life for the rest of your life is you get to, like, when you go out to dinner, you get to go to a restaurant that's going to force you in, in a mask, and then they're still going to put you in the white tent outside mm -hmm. of, the, of the restaurant. Right. Um, and and this this is like if you have little kids if you have like a five or six year old They're gonna grow up thinking that this is like normal, right? You know and that going out to dinner is Like gonna be something really dystopic right and really like depressing Well, now you had you had a little more upscale uh, experience um, on Penn Avenue with some other uh, tents outside <laughs> of a restaurant. Can we look at those? Yeah, okay, okay. Um, yeah, wow, so neat. <laughs> those were like, okay, so I'm walking, right? So I had time to kill before I had to get the bus back home. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking um, along, you know, Liberty Avenue or whatever. And I see off in the distance these mounds 
and I'm thinking, oh wow, that's a lot of snow. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of snow that the the Big snow step. the snow plows. But, and I'm like, but wait, they're so perfectly <laughs> like situated. Yeah. They're like perfectly round, and they're all the same size. So I'm like, so I look a little closer. So I got closer, and I started, you know, filming. And sure enough, there are these like little space bubbles with like a living room setting in one of them, and tables and chairs and a lounge, you know lounge setting you know what it reminded me of it reminded me of like when you would go to outside lands mm -hmm. remember mm -hmm. and they had these cool little lounges mm -hmm. that so you pay you know so you would get a we didn't because we worked for the um the, the company that the company presented it that pre would present yeah, the, the promoter day, yeah the, so we worked for the promoter that would present the three-day festival um, and so we would work one day and then we would get the rest of the weekend for free it was right. a really excellent way because the tickets for like a full weekend were like six hundred dollars and mm -hmm. those were cheap mm -hmm. they have since gone up like over the years yeah, yeah. so but outside lands is this really super fun festival like super it fun was. i mean <laughs> out of out of this world like yeah outrageously fun and um just awesome and there are these like little areas where you can go and and just do really fun things and so they had these these tents set mm -hmm. up just like what you just saw right and there would be you know cool lights inside and cool space spacey like music. lounge sitting and music and stuff and you go in and you get your like really cool cocktail and hang out and then you leave and go see a band or go do something else or mm -hmm. you know whatever um but these were that was a different but that was for fun that was for fun it was a different that was like yeah the context was different too I yeah mean, this was had you had cool music, you had cool people, and you weren't wearing masks, and you were, no, you and, you were wearing like, masks. and you were like hanging out with people and just like right. seeing what was going on. And it was like it was like a, a cool little environment that they had created, right? So I'm wondering if that was this. like an introduction into like <laughs> what we're experiencing now. No, that now. was just practicality for you know. You that know. was just something fun. Like it was they fun. had, it was a theme. So every. Every little like area that you went to, because it took up a big portion of Golden Gate Park. So like every, so like they had a chocolate theme, mm -hmm. and so it was chocolate in the area. woods. Yeah. So it was called Choco Land. Choco Land. And right. it was in the woods, right. and there were different areas you could go and get different kinds of chocolate. Right. Okay, and yeah. then you would leave there, and you would go to another you area. Go to beer lands or wine lands. Wine or lands or beer land. <laughs> and so this area was set up for like it was like space land, and it looked like yeah, you know, and so, but now. It's like you go to this nice restaurant and you want to have like a nice steak dinner or a nice pasta dinner and you got to sit in a tent on the street mm -hmm. and this is it for the rest of your life well, and you have to wear a mask. Awesome. Or, and if you want to go inside the restaurant and actually have the restaurant experience where you actually get to sit at a nice table with, you know, and be treated like a human being and like, you know, like you're living in a civil society. Um, you've got to uh, probably have an app on your phone to prove that you're a clean human. Uh, maybe get a vaccine. Maybe uh, wear a mask that they provide for you because I want to make sure that you're wearing the right kind of mask. Yeah, a and you branded to, mask. A branded mask. <laughs> and you have to capitulate to all this bullshit to have the opportunity to experience um, a nice dinner with your husband or your friend or go on a nice date. You know, that's such bullshit. It's yeah. like... And so a lot of people are just like, well, I guess I'll just sit in the tent outside and be treated like a fucking peasant. Right. You know, you but peasant, you can sit in the dirty area. The only, and the only reason they have the tents, Julie, is because they need to keep it warm because it's freezing outside. Obviously, you no, saw but the, the snow. Tents, the tents went up in the summertime last year. Some of them did, yeah. No, the tents yeah. are forever. Yeah. Spring, summer, winter, fall. <laughs> the tents are forever. This is it for the rest well, of your life. We, we did earlier, uh, back in November, we showed some footage of some video that I took of a restaurant that still had outside tables. And they, you know, those heaters that they were putting inside the tents now too, right? The Those things, you know, those, those um, uh, whatever they're called. They, they heat up a, an mm -hmm. area, right? Mm -hmm. And you put them out on your, your patio deck or whatever. Well, they had these out in this area outside of their restaurant with the outside tables. And it was 32 degrees outside and you can see flurries in the video. <laughs> but it's like, that was basically the, like the last week I think they did outdoor seating. That, that restaurant does not have tents outside and they, um, uh, they just do uh, takeout now. You know, but I guess the whole point up. of this is that the entire world is now going to be covered in 
triage. Right. So you're going to go to your restaurant. And it's going to have a triage unit where you get to go in and sit inside a plastic tent on a plastic table. And, you know, you, you get to spend $200 to do this mm -hmm. at a nice restaurant. Everything needs to look like an insane asylum with padded walls or like a hospital setting, like a triage unit. Like you need to be, you know, cared for because you're a biohazard. <laughs> You know, know. Yeah. the whole world is going to be like this forever. Right. It's never, ever, ever going back to what it was before the national emergency, at least here in the United States and I think, on March well, 13th. And it's all around the world. And, and, and even if you do push, if we do find a way to push back, I mean, I, there's, there's a whole indoctrinated, uh, you know, population out there. They love just, it. The, they love it. It's like, you know, they insist that that onion is an apple. Yep. Yep. <laughs> right? Yep. So They're like, I want to spend $300 on a gourmet meal and go sit in the street in a tent and be treated like a biohazard. When? I want to do it. And you're like, okay. okay. So that's basically your attitude now. Your attitude is like, enjoy your onion. Oh, I'm sorry. Enjoy your, your apple. apple. Okay. Enjoy being treated like a biohazard for the rest of of your life, it's never going to end. Make sure that all sense of self-actualization yeah. or self-preservation yeah. or anything having to do with being treated like a decent, respectable human being, make sure that's all gone and wiped off the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Enjoy that. Mm -hmm. I would much rather just sit at home for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time with awesome paintings that he paints and all this artwork and great access to books. And we have been very creative in the kitchen. We can make our own gourmet meals mm -hmm. in our own home, well, you know, where it's very aesthetically well, pleasing. You know, you this, know? this, now this afternoon when you were out there, it was probably about, what, about 30? Yeah. And yeah. it was sunny, so it wasn't it was too really bad. Nice. It was nice, but great. But this morning when I got up, it was nine degrees. So, you know, in the deep freeze of winter, um, especially in Texas last week, can you imagine being in a tent outside? It's just, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so, oh, one thing I was going to say, though. But is, we were is, in an insane asylum. We are. Now. Those, those yeah. round we're tents here. that you were, you were showing, those, I think, were actual greenhouses, like portable greenhouses that you can buy. I know, we should just take one. Well, <laughs> take one. <laughs> Let's go rent a truck. <laughs> and then and we'll just take it. Yoink! And yoink, throw it in the back of the truck and, it'll, and take off. Yeah, that sounds like, like a good idea. <laughs> like, seriously. Like, those things are really expensive. They are. We plan on doing a lot of planting like well, we did last year. You know, we, eating we, out of the garden. We bought, we bought a, a greenhouse that was pretty cheap. Um, that's, that's actually, you know, if we bought three more of those, we could have our own underground cafe. Because they wouldn't necessarily know that we're serving food in there. And, and, well, you know? yeah. So, like, when we went on our honeymoon, we went to, <laughs> No, it's cool. We went to Stockholm on our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to our friends, our former friends, who, who <laughs> donated money towards us for congratulations for being married or something, you know. It's, we didn't really have family, like, supporting us. So, we were able to compile the, the donations that they gave us and we actually were able to have a honeymoon, which mm -hmm. is really nice. And yeah. so we took ourselves to Stockholm and one of the meals that we had was inside a greenhouse. So it was a really... It was a real greenhouse. It was a real greenhouse. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it had like a gravel floor, floor right. and and you sat at these really cool wooden benches and it was a greenhouse. Yeah. And everything that you ate was made from like... Well, most yeah, of it was most made of it, yeah, from the garden. Grown, and, grown in there. Yeah. The, the greenhouse itself is a historical building. I mean, it or historic, I don't know which. Mm -hmm. It actually, um, it was built in like the 1920s. And so it was really, it had a lot of uh, character to it and a lot of, um, you know, good spirit, good feeling inside. Yeah. You know, and it's a greenhouse it too, right? So right. it's, you know, you've got, you've got so a plant energy. That and is a, a... Oxygen. I'm a, I've been getting really good in the kitchen and really creative and you are you've always been a really good cook and so that's kind of like a kind of like a goal i think is, <laughs> is every single time we sit down and have a meal i'm like man this is really good we could probably you know <laughs> yeah, offer just, a, a food you know a food experience like a dining experience for people to come you know whether it's this place or another place to come 
and you know it's like this is what we're serving this is how much it costs you don't have to wear a mask you don't have to ha prove that you're a, hum a, a clean human being you don't have to have a, an app on your phone uh, you can so, pay with cash you know unfortunately like, this is we a, would have to do that um on the qt i think on the qt because we'd yeah. have to deal with the health department and you know right now in allegheny county oh it's just friends over for dinner right right yeah exactly giving a donation yeah they're, yeah. Just, they're just giving us donations yeah uh because well, that's what morgan was doing right. in uh that's true San Francisco, yeah. 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 Anyway, there's a restaurant here in in, uh, in the Pittsburgh area, and um, they are getting hammered, or not hammered, they're getting slammed by the law, by the, the health department suing them or going after them, um, and the judges are, you know, they're corrupt. Being it's, total fascists. Yeah, they're, they're saying, oh, you know, you chose to stay open, and you chose to not wear masks, and you chose, so, you know, you're blah, 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 and it's like, what, wait a minute. <laughs> So, you know, there's no law here that's 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 being broken. So what is it we're in court for? So why are we in court? Right. Why do you force us to close? Right. So like what the fuck is going on? Yeah. So. Um but they kept getting fined by uh, by the um, health Allegheny department. County Health Department. Yeah. yeah. So Well, I mean, so the thing that I'm thinking about is more like a it's what did he call them? He called them um they were events, okay? Yeah. They were they were social events. <laughs> Um, and it and it just so happened that you know he well, would serve people food and they would a, leave a donation. It was a trend back then where people would get together. <laughs> yeah, me, it's a millennial together. thing. It was a millennial thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean this is about five six years ago. Right. You know, and it yeah. was a you know so it was kind of a trendy thing for people that are like hosting. I think he's doing it in Portland right he now. He might be or he might not be given how masky they are there. Uh, well, see, they love the mask though. Yeah, but like they, think of that. Think but of the Morgan thing is, is they're not. But people. they're not going to be. They're not going to be. You know, they're going to be social distancing, Julie. They're not going to be getting together. They'll do it on Zoom. Yeah, that's true. That is true. <laughs> They'll, They'll like, have their mm, little like mm. social food <laughs> parties on Zoom. Yeah. See. Yeah. I'm eating my rice. Isn't well, that good? so I. So really quickly, I want to talk about like millennials just really, really, <laughs> really, really quickly, okay. really quickly. So we have two types of millennials. We have the guy that we're talking about who's from San Francisco. He moved to Ohio briefly and now he lives in Portland and he has like a new baby and he's got a wife, I think. And he's very much like deep blue, like totally into like social distance mask. We'll do everything online. And he's very creative and inventive. So I'm sure he's making bank and I'm sure he's doing fine mm -hmm. but he's following all of these you know dumbass fascist protocols right um and then you have another kind of millennial the other kind of millennials that are like i don't give a shit i'm gonna do what i want and they talk sh they talk so much shit and they and they just heap all sorts of judgment on people that follow along with the uh the rules and they they go and stalk like their municipal board meetings and <laughs> talk shit and they swear and they're funny and they're they're real you know and they're a lot, a lot of them are crazy conspiracies i think you yeah. know where i'm going yeah this, no, right? i know yeah i do so i mean i listened to a like a four hour podcast from one of them oh my god i I was laughing for like four straight hours. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I was Almost. down here and she was upstairs and I could hear her laughing out loud. It was, it was hysterical. pretty funny. Hysterical. Yeah. It's really hysterical. So, you yeah. know, I'm not going to give his name because, you know, He's I don't... He's been featured here before, actually. Yeah. He walked into a Target once with yeah. a mask on. He's like, come on. <laughs> he, he put the mask on his on his eyes right he had an he had like a you know like a robin mask yeah and i think yeah. he's like a little on the spectrum yeah. and what's so funny about millennials is that they grew up with play dates right they don't know how to like be alone or whatever and so the play dates are always like super um uh organized organized <laughs> and polite so like okay so there's this like big what i call the millennial zoom call play date right so it was all these millennials that don't give a shit about anything talking about everything under the sun from taking baths and turmeric to flat earth to all sorts of bullshit nobody takes each other seriously and this one guy came came into the podcast and he just came in like like a like a a a, a bull in a china shop. He just was like, oh, wah, blah, 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 and he started like, he talked over people and he was like, um, really just gregarious. And one of the millennials was like, I'm 
I'm out of here. I'm leaving. I'm exiting this party because I feel that this person was rude, was rude, and he was just talking over me. And then suddenly the guy was like, oh man, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it's in typical millennial fashion on a play date. Next thing you know, everybody's like being really polite. And singing kumbaya. And no, singing kumbaya. <laughs> it was weird, yeah, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, I came in hot, man. I just, I Yeah, it's like, I'm really sorry I came in hot. You know, it's just my culture and I'm really sorry and all, 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 all this stuff. And, yeah. and he's like apologizing for being who he is. Right. And the other millennials were like, well, okay, it's all right. Man, we're sorry we made you feel bad. You know, and I'm <laughs> like, this Oh my god, it was so funny, but then I'm thinking, that's so funny because with Gen X, it's like, if you have, like, this kind of thing where you've got a bunch of people together and somebody walks in from the outside and they're just gregarious and they kind of take over the conversation and they interrupt a bunch of people, Gen Xers will just go, <sighs> they'll look at their one, they'll wait, sh- they'll stare at their shoes, they'll wait for the guy to, 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 to stop and then they'll be like, okay, you done now? Yeah, I hear what you're saying and they'll just be able to continue on without having to stop and like suck each other's dicks. You know, I don't know. Cause, it's cause, like because we're used to being interrupted by other people. Right. Because so. Gen X's are used to being constantly like <laughs> interrupted, interrupted and ignored uh, and yeah. set up to fail and yeah. all that stuff. So it's uh, yeah. And we're speaking and generally here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and criticized and. Um, but you know, you, it's interesting you bring up the, the Gen X and I mean the uh, the the um, the millennial thing here because we just we just saw a movie um, over the weekend and it's been out for a while. It came out in two thousand seventeen. Um, it's called The Circle, and um, we're gonna I'm gonna talk about this and then other things. So we're gonna use this as a springboard. So here's a scene from The Circle. subcommittee to investigate the circle. We cannot rely on them to say we're not violating antitrust laws. I'm sure the circle will be glad to cooperate. We have every confidence that Senator Williamson's allegations will be discredited. You were probably wondering about your new screen. (laughs) Hi, I'm Gina. I'm Matt. Hi. Dan said this would be a good moment to set up all your socials. Do you have time? Sure. Great. I take it last week you were too busy to set up your company's social account, and I don't think you've imported your old profile. Sorry, I've just been kind of overwhelmed so far. Oh. No, in a good way. I just haven't had time yet for, like, extracurricular stuff. Wow. That's so interesting you put it that way. We actually see your profile and the activity on it as integral to your participation here. This is how your coworkers, even the ones on the other side of campus, know who you are. Communication certainly isn't extracurricular, right? Right. Of course. We consider you a full, knowable person of unlimited potential and a crucial member of the community. But you're such an enigma. I am? It's been years since someone so shrouded in mystery started here. Everyone really likes you. Your work's been exemplary, strong ratings for your first week. Are you satisfied with your performance? Uh, I I think I can do better. Good, but it's not all about work, okay? It's also about community. Of course. It's all connected. But you've had a blip or two when it comes to meshing with the community, like your absence at several weekend or evening events, which are, of course, optional. I'm sorry? Let's start with this weekend. You left campus at 11.42 p.m. on Friday and got back 8.46 a.m. Monday. Was there work on the weekend? I don't know. I'm sorry. No, no, no. There wasn't mandatory work on the weekend. This isn't like a clock in, clock out type place, thank God. But you know, there were thousands of people here participating in a hundred different activities. So many. I'm sorry, I, um, my dad had an, an episode and I was home helping out with that. I'm so sorry to hear that. Is that related to his MS? Uh, yeah. We didn't know anything about this incident. Did you reach out to any circlers during this crisis? Annie? Anybody? Uh, no. I... no. May, there are four groups here for staffers dealing with MS, two of them for children of MS patients. Have you sought out a group? I didn't know... Okay. Can you talk about what you did the rest of the weekend? Nothing really. I just... I kayaked. You kayaked? With who? Nobody. Just on my own. 
I kayak. We could have kayaked together. Nothing on your profile about kayaking. No smiles, no ratings, no posts. I'm no psychologist, but this behavior sometimes stems from low self-worth. This is what participation is all about. Bringing you, lifting you up. Thus, your participation window. I can't believe you've been here this long without being on the main social feed. You're about to have your world rock. <laughs> See, these are all of last week's messages. That's why there's so many. 8,000? Mm-hmm. Looks like you have a lot of catching up to do here. A feast. <laughs> have fun. Oh, forgot one more thing. This is your participation rink. Party rink, for short. Some people here call it the popularity rink, but it's not really that. It's just an algorithm-generated number that takes into account all your activity in the inner circle. That makes sense? I think so. OK, and again, it's just for fun. It's just for fun. <laughs> OK, bye. <laughs> Okay, so that was kind of a long, <laughs> a long uh, scene. Sorry about that. But I wanted you to see all of that because now you don't have to see the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So I was like, we're going to watch The Circle tonight. And he was like, well, what's that? And I'm like, oh, it's Dave Eggers' um, book he wrote, and they made it into a movie. And we, Dave, okay, Dave Eggers is, I think he's pretty much an asset. He started a foundation called 826. Uh -huh. And so in every city across... The country, there's some, there's, um, so for instance in San Francisco where it started, it's 826 Valencia, and mm -hmm. Valencia is the name of the street. Mm -hmm. And in Chicago, it's like 826, you know, Clay, Clay or whatever the, the street is. And in New York, it's 826 something else, you know. So every, every one of his locations is 826. It's a foundation, and it's, you know, again, it's that, for a creativity. For foundation for creativity, but it's, it's, I think he's an asset, yeah. um, and it's all about applied psychology. And every foundation has a theme. So in San Francisco, it's a pirate theme, mm -hmm. and in <laughs> Chicago, it's like a feed store theme, and in mm -hmm. New York, it's about like Wall Street. It's that kind of theme, and in Portland, it's another theme, and, and all this. So, right. but um, but anyway, um, so he wrote a book, and then they they made the book. Into a movie. Into a movie, which is starring Tom Hanks, yeah. which is another red flag. Right. And I didn't think that it would be so triggering. It was super triggering. So Paxton and Oswald, like, or Oswald Paxton, or Paxton Oswald. Patton Oswald. Patton Oswald. Patton Oswald. He's a total... He's a douchebag. Douchebag. Um, so we're watching, watching scenes, other scenes from The Circle seem to me like watching Woody from Toy Story do a TED Talk. <laughs> It was weird. Yeah. It was, it was weird. weird. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, that part was Because he was, he was doing his Woody voice. That is right. He was, wasn't he? You know? Woody from Toy Story. Yeah. Yeah. But it was like Woody doing a, toy, doing a TED Talk. Anyway, so this scene, you know, I, I was saying to Julie, we need to play this because everything we talk about, when we always talk about San Francisco, when we always talk about um, the, the, the toxic nature and the po toxic positivity and, and all, everything that surrounds like living in San Francisco in the 21st century um, is in this scene. You know, you're, you're not busy enough, but hey, this isn't a punch in, punch out kind of place. Oh no, we're really It's just cool that you're always, you, you, just, you, you just always work. <laughs> Don't be it's silly. Just, you're always working. And you're always on. And you love it. And you love it. And you ha always have to be social when you're doing these other things. So you're always like multitasking, which is exhausting, especially to somebody, you know, who isn't a part of that world. Um, and, you know, it, it sums up why I'm no longer in the corporate world. Now, I was in an, I was in a more old fashioned corporate world, you know, like an older corporate world. Uh, when but I was it was there, starting to integrate. But it was, into that. it was, yeah, it was, it was getting that way, and it was getting hard to keep up, and it was like I just, I. Well, but, I mean, and you I know, and I tried interviewing at places that were that were smaller shops that were like you know app developers or whatever, and it was like that. Right. Right, and I would never get the job, obviously, because they don't want Grandpa working for them. For one thing, they, love, they don't want this, <laughs> and they don't, or their dad, and and they don't, and, and and you just don't fit into the culture. They just they feel uncomfortable around you, first of all, but then also you, it's just hard to keep up because it's a different way of operating. I mean, 
I didn't see my first computer, like personal computer or, or Mac until I was in college, right? And it's not because I lived in a poor part of the world. It's just because they hadn't been developed yet. <laughs> they hadn't been made yet. <laughs> they hadn't been made yet. And so... I remember, I think I was like 14. <laughs> I was in school and my, my computer science teacher, I was in like high school or whatever, and my computer science teacher was like super nerdy. He was so nerdy and he was freakly excited. Like he was so over the top excited about the Mac. Yeah. And I was just like, well, I my mom was already like working on word processors and, and computers back before anybody else was. And I was like, what is just like Whatever. a machine that well, prints stuff? I wasn't all that impressed with the Mac at first. No, it was, no. You know, it was, it was just really, little, little it was just like this little box. It's like, what's, it was, what, is the, what is the little thing here? That's what key? What's that do? Anyway, um, <laughs> you know, my graphic design teacher was all excited about it. I was like, yeah. oh, so what? But I mean, you know, the thing is, though, I caught up fast, and I, you know, I ended up in the internet world, and, um, but I, you know, I didn't last longer than twenty years. <laughs> twenty years. That was pretty not good. bad. That's pretty good run. Pretty good. Yeah. But, well, um, another thing too, though, just as a side note, in general, when you're in a corporate field for that long, usually you transition into like being a director or a manager mm -hmm. or a you know a department head or something like right. that and, and I didn't want that every time you know that would come up as an option he'd be like no I don't want that just give me the money and I'll do the grunt work I don't want to be in charge of people because management is having been in management it's a very it's kind of a mind fuck yeah. you know and you have to be yeah yeah, well, you have to be, and you're way too nice. Like, yeah, I, he's, yeah, he's a, I don't. Yeah, he's I didn't, way too nice. I didn't want to get into that. So, but so I guess this kind of helps us transition into what we we're kind of talking about. So, what I've been finding is, is our media intake this last week has been about uh, individualism versus um, community. The, the community, right? Mm -hmm. Now we are kind of in between, right? So we are. We, we believe in, in collectivism, collectiv collectivity, but you know the collective has to have autonomy as well as the individual. The individual needs to have autonomy, and if you don't have a healthy individual, you can't help have a healthy community, okay? And um, so, you know, we don't, we believe in horizontal organization. We don't believe in, you know, top-down hierarchy or a bottom-up hierarchy of any kind, right? Oh, and the so, communists are going to have a field day with oh, that Oh, I don't statement. give a shit about the Marxists, the, because we're not. We're not <laughs> communists. So. I mean, I listen, I said fuck the word... The, fuck the Marxists. I said the word horizontalism or, or, autonom, or autonomous uh, sovereignty or something like that on Twitter, and oh my god, I got, I got trounced on Twitter by some, like, some dude who was just like, I hate anarchists. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Blah, 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 blah. Like, you just like, and oh my god. And so, in typical anarchy style, I'm just like, you know, because anarchists don't really, well, they don't they, really fight. They well, just kind they, of like... If they do, they're very articulate, and, and I've, you know, I've come across some very articulate people who just, I mean, because they do argue with each other. <laughs> that's why right. nothing ever gets right, done. Right, exactly. Well, that's part of it. But uh, anyway, anyway um, so yeah, yeah so we've been seeing that a lot of this, this has been going on in our, it just, you know, sometimes, you know, you get this happenstance, right? It's, it's a, it's a thing. Um, uh, and, and, and so we've been seeing, um, so we chose to watch The Circle, but we also chose to watch a series, which we didn't know it was about that subject called, um, I Can't Get You Out of My Head. Um, by uh, by Adam Curtis. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to show you a clip because mm -hmm. it's just it's a six part series. No, because YouTube will take it down. <laughs> they took his own work down. Well, he like he's like this famous director out of the BBC, and YouTube's like yoink. He's a he's <laughs> they a took uh, it down. he's a he, yeah he's a filmmaker. He's a documentary maker, and he's been <laughs> making documentaries for the BBC forever. And a BBC claimed copyright. Uh, uh, issues on one of his vid videos, and, and so it got it got taken off of YouTube, and it was like, there's BBC content on this BBC production, <sighs> it's got to go. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't I don't make get any it. sense. It doesn't at all. really. But yeah, YouTube, one, YouTube yeah, is not. Yeah, whatever. So they're not working. But he, full but he has, a, he has a website, so you can watch it on on the on the website. Um, mm -hmm. 
Anyway, so it's a really, I, I, I enjoyed the, uh, the series quite a bit. Oh, sure. And it was talking about how, um, uh, you know, over the last hundred years, how the transition was made um, from individualism to more, you know, not collectivism, but more, you know, society oriented. Communitarianism. Communitarianism. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, you know, that, that scene from the circle was very communitarian. communitarian. Oh, yeah. my God. So like... I love people who live out in the middle of nowhere, like, say, Alaska, and they've never, ever, ever in their whole life, ever, ever worked in any situation where there's communitarianistic philosophy and yet they're yeah. considered the experts, experts on it and, they, Isn't that and for some reason they they attack us for for not having the same opinion about the uh, the subject mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> anyway anyway um what is the person's it rhymes with crap on <laughs> Sorry, uh, not sorry. Um, but sorry, not sorry. Hashtag not sorry. But the uh, sorry, the the, <laughs> the, uh, the the Adam Curtis uh, series is pretty decent. Um, it's, what I like about it is is that he um, he uh, he picks up small threads and kind of um, talks about this person, this individual, and the 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 odd circumstance where they are either in a, a, uh, a, a collectivist type of situation and they're an individual or they are pushing for collectivism in a more individualistic uh, setting and um, and how you know that kind of works out <laughs> and and um, but it was it was you know and it, it kind of it kind of goes forward and you know starts back in history goes forward a little bit and then goes back and then starts again and then, you know and eventually brings you through the 20th century into the 21st and I thought that was very interesting yeah how he did that I, I he is a big inspiration for us oh yeah um, aesthetically you know some well, people don't also, agree with you know where his, he goes with right. his politics or you know whatever, whatever. but um, as creatives aesthetically well, like, and we strive to be like the that, structure and the, the storytelling that he that he provides so that's where we're at because we're looking at the you know that yeah yeah, yeah. we're looking at it through an aesthetic yeah. lens so yeah. this thing with the circle it just to go back to that scene that you just watched you know that is what your life is going to be like from now on where everything about your life is going to be kind of like what's best for the community. So you have to set aside whatever works for you personally mm -hmm. and do what's best for the community. And that is actually antithetical to community. Community will not survive unless there are individuals who break off from the community for a bit, go do their own thing, collect their thoughts, create something, be their own person, and then come back to the communi community with those individual thoughts and individual offerings. Mm -hmm. What communitarianism does and what this te techno technological biofascist overreach that comes right out of San Francisco, what this philosophy wants from you is nothing of yourself and only a hundred thousand percent of your time, your energy, your blood, your data, everything about you needs to be for the community. Mm -hmm. And the community is this amorphous like language that only benefits your boss or your boss's boss. Right. It doesn't benefit you. It doesn't benefit anybody in your position that's on equal levels with you. It only benefits the people upstairs who are just feeding off of you like vampires. Right. But they're gonna they're going to, you know, tell you that it's for your best interest. They'll tell you till the day is long that you need to sign up for this or do that or work from home or rent out your computer or rent out your blender and, or rent, <laughs> rent out, out your, your house your house for your the living community. room for a, for a meeting you know, while you're you gone. You can make yeah. a little money but right. you never really make enough money to make it work and you are in for a huge mm -hmm. a huge disappointment um, and a huge well, you'll be, you'll probably end up committing suicide, mm -hmm. and I think that's the goal as I well. Think that is the goal. Yeah. yeah. Allison actually uh, stopped off at at uh, UPenn, a University of oh, today uh, in Pennsylvania, her, yeah. in yeah. one of her live feeds today, and she looked at the the uh, the, uh, the the screen. So there's a screen that that generates you know different ads like these classes are coming up and this is happening, and mm -hmm. let's all applaud for the uh, frontline workers and that kind of thing. 
And she went through and she said, check it out. This class here is, is it, the class is called like something, something impact, you know? And th these are, so those are the key words that you wanna, mm -hmm. you wanna look out for. Words like impact, words like, uh, well, community, words like, uh, think of another word, um, uh, equity. Equity, uh, yeah, equity uh, is know, one of them too, yeah. These are all like red flag words that mean you're gonna be a slave and the people running this organization are going to get rich off of you. Mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, speaking of impact and investment, impact investment, um, this last week and the week, I think maybe two weeks ago, um, the, uh, the publishing group, the, the uh, nonprofit, anarchist nonprofit, uh, Winter Oak, produced two uh, issues of Acorn. Um, I'll provide the link in the show notes. Um, but this week, uh, they, they produced a, uh, in, as part of ACORN, they had like a synopsis of a very long article that they had written the, the previous uh, uh, issue of ACORN. Uh, and this is an online blog journal uh, thing. And they were just talking about how uh, impact investment uh, in leftist communities and how it was um, pitched to leftist communities and producers um, earlier, you know, like maybe a few years ago. Uh, and so it's 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 a it's a very interesting thing to see how this co-optation of um, uh, politics and um, language and um, uh, activity and basically uh, ex what what did he say something like exploiting the very people they claim to be helping. Okay, these impact <clears throat> investors. So they <laughs> exploit the very people they claim to be helping or lifting up. And that's what we see a lot in, in impact investment. Now, we did a video uh, a few months, a couple months ago uh, called Co-Optation, and you can go to our, our, our YouTube channel and watch that. Uh, it's about impact investors investing in um, co-ops, in you know, companies that are cooperatively owned. And um, it's, it was, it's interesting. I think that the way that they're approaching co-ops co is the same thing they were doing with like, you know, non -pro other nonprofits and especially leftist organizations, you know, mm -hmm. um, and you can see that their, their influence and their impact on, you know, these, these groups that used to lift up, you know, more individual and, you know, autonomous rights to, you know, then turn around and, and, and believe the government for everything. Um, there's another publication that they that they um, they reference um, that's new and it's called Nevermore and it's a PDF. I'll put that link in the show notes as well, mm -hmm. um, just for your you know just to go look at it. But again, it kind of goes along with this theme of what we're talking about. How you know the media that we've been taking in this week has been this sort of individual versus community kind of dichotomy uh, thing that's going on. Right. So I think the, the, the conversation needs to get away from, you know, the Klaus, Klaus Schwab uh, World Economic Forum, Great Reset, you know, kind of stuff that we all know about. We all know that it's happening. There's nothing that we can really do to stop it. Uh, you have to exist within the framework of fascism, you know, because that's what it is. It's all fascism. And so I think that what we really need to do is focus on, you know, first of all, we need to make sure that if we have kids, that our kids are able to still express themselves and our children are still able to express mm -hmm. themselves and their creative natures um, and make sure that, that their little brains and their little hearts aren't, aren't pounded to dust before they become a self-actualized person. Mm -hmm. This is, and so our next video essay is going to be talking about um, applied psychology and how all of this, everything that we're experiencing, is meant to take away from our individual nature. Mm -hmm. Individual nature is what makes the planet. It's it what it's what makes a mm -hmm. successful community. Right. Um, and so our next video essay, our long form video essay, which will only be available for our patrons when it's done. Um, we'll be all about that. It'll probably be anywhere from 30 to, you know, 40 minutes. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah. going to be a deep, a little, somewhat of a deep dive into yeah. that. But we, um, we feel that that's the people should be really, um, concerned about that. I think that, that what we're going to see in society, um, 
subconscious. There's going to be a subconscious response to the fact that the the the, the individual's nature or the person's individuality is going to be stomped out of them. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a subconscious reaction to that. So we might see um, strange tattoo designs. You know, um, mm -hmm. things like that. Things that society does. Yeah, that they're to, sort of there's sort of an outgrowth to scream individualness in in a, in a in a society that says you may not be an individual you must only think about the community so mm -hmm. they'll outwardly they'll do all the right things and then they might do something really strange one of the things that Adam Curtis did in you know and and the, the the series is called um, I can't get you out of can't my get head can't get you out of my head but there's six films within the series right. and they're they're about, individually named as well. Yeah, yeah and, and in one of them, I think it was in the fifth one, he he was ta talking about this a little bit, and he was using video footage from another source or mm -hmm. whatever, yeah. like he, like we do. You know, he, yeah. he, we follow right. the way he presents is the way we present, and the the video was of a of a girl, a young woman wearing a bright red outfit in a sea of people wearing gray or black. Right. Remember that? Yeah. Looking very unique, you know. And so I think that's what we're going to say is is there's always a subconscious response to this demand that you stop being an individual and that you stop showing your individual yeah. creative nature or yourself. Um, unfortunately, what's going to happen with children is if they do that, it's going to come out in forms of like temper tantrums or eating onions that they want to insist are apples, <laughs> right. you know, it's going to come out in negative ways, which is going to cause them to get punished, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what's unfortunate about, about it is I see that, that being an individual is going to equal punishment to them. And that's how it's going it, to, that's how it's going to go away. They're mm -hmm. just going to become these little automated machines with no individual thought, no individual feelings. And no real connection to life force with right. the earth or with each other. Yeah. Well, I think that it's, it's you know... It's really scary. It's, it's going to be, it's basically going to be a form of slavery. Um, yeah. And, we're creating and slaves. That, and yeah. yeah, we are being, yeah, we're being trained to be slaves. Right. And, and so it's too late for us because we're already self-actualized. We are who we are. We're already <laughs> <Right>. gelled. <laughs> they're, I'm Generation they're, X. So, He's Generation well, X yeah, on the cusp of um, baby boom Generation X. Yeah. He is who he is. I am who I am. You are who you are. But mm -hmm. the kids... The kids will never get to be anything beyond a slave, no. you know? Yeah. Especially um, poor kids. Yeah, I know. And they won't, in some ways, I don't know if they'll know it or not. No, they won't. But, they won't know You know, it. the thing is, though, I've been noticing... If you're conscious of something, then you know to fight it. Right. But they're not going to be conscious of this insidious introduction into slavery. Yeah, I think so that there will be go into it. Yeah, there will be some acting out, and I think that there's already exhibiting some acting out going on. Um, I've been seeing it on the on the street as I'm, you know, riding my bike or driving, you know, my job. And um, you know, I saw the other day some some kid in a hot rod Mustang <laughs> would he basically pulled out of a, a parking lot just just burning rubber and just like you know hauling ass down a you know a road that's 15 miles per hour <laughs> doing about 50 you know and and you know chirping Just, his his tires every every gear shift so yeah um it was it's a you it's, know it's acting out it is acting out and, and the it, gunshots too we've I think been hearing are, i think i agree with you we've been hearing gunshots in the neighborhood and people are around here are freaking out and they we're like, are they're really but I, scared i think that it is either acting out or it's the equivalent of the fireworks that we were experiencing in June. exactly you know? so we live in an opportunity zone and opportunity zones are uh right or it's poverty it's like we have rubbled out streets you know it's there's no Blight. grocery stores it's, there's blighted buildings mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there's sometimes vermin. Thank goodness we have a cat <laughs> who's a really good hunter. But so it's, it's, um, you know, it's, and, and so all throughout the age of COVID over the last year or so, uh, during certain times, we were getting a, a, an influx of fireworks. Like, and we're not talking like, oh, that's cute, like way, way off in the yeah. distance. We're talking like, 
such intense, intense barrage of fireworks. It's, it was like bombs going off. And they were like and professional grade. We talked about this before. Professional grade. We, we but showed you so we have new, new followers and new, okay. new, yeah. and a lot, a lot of the That's people true. who follow us anyway don't watch us every, every right, week. So right. to recap, we had this terrible experience that never ended. It was just a constant like barrage of fireworks. In fact, they were so intense and so strong that you could smell them in the house. Yeah. Like you could walk into the house and smell the, the, the fireworks, yeah. the sulfur from the fireworks. At one point, he went out into the backyard and he screamed up at them and said, fucking stop and they stopped for a minute yeah. like he yelled a, little bit, yeah. a flurry of swear words and just like <laughs> and they could hear it fuck you you know <laughs> they could and he hear just it. like <laughs> lost his shit you know well that's what's happening now except in instead of fireworks it's gunfire yeah and I'm it's not, like i'm not gonna yell at them it's like yeah we're not gonna yell <laughs> but at it's, them. Been ha it's been happening at like 2 a.m and, and it's been happening like every night yeah. at the same time fireworks and it's so close it feels like it's right outside the bedroom window. Mm -hmm. And this is something, you know, so we belong to a couple of social media groups that are just for the locals in the neighborhood. It's like the local neighborhood community watch, or watch group yeah. or whatever. And it's just like a barrage of postings. Did you hear like all that gunfire? What's it about? I don't get it. And we're like, if I try to tell them that it's part of sustainable development goals, it's part of a way to, um, Force to people out. for either force people out or put people in a trauma-based mind control. Mm -hmm. It's trauma-based mind control. That's what the fireworks were about. Mm -hmm. The barrage of fireworks that we got. It's trauma-based mind control. And it's the same thing with the gunfire. If I try to say that to these people here who are... I'm surprised that they know how to make a, a Facebook post because a lot of them are functionally illiterate. Like... <laughs> You, when you read their Facebook posts, they, they don't know how to spell. They don't, well, and they don't know how to structure sentences. And they don't know how to structure sentences. They, yeah. they, structure sentences. Yeah, right. they will, they don't, they, they literally don't know how to spell. And I have to like read it and kind of like. Even with spell check and spell, you know, autocorrect. They don't know like, anything. Yeah, like they're just like, yeah. you know, they don't know how to spell. Like I don't know how to, you know, no. they have the intellect of like second graders and they're, you know. Feels like it sometimes. In their forties and fifties. Right. So. I mean, that's what poverty does. And that's what, that's what an opportunity zone that's is That's like. what an opportunity yeah. zone is, You know, it's, right? like, it's so. like shit education. Well, I mean, and, the director, you know. the director of one of the, of one of the nonprofits that provides all of the fascist wraparound services for the poor community was like, during the election, he was like, I wish there was somebody who was like a woman and a moderate and maybe with a background in the military the military somebody who could appeal to every and i'm like you're talking tulsi gabbard and he's like who yeah you know and during the the this other election from four years ago mm -hmm. um i was chatting with some people who were from this area before we realized we were going to move here and and they were like i don't know who to vote for i don't want to vote for trump i don't want to vote for hillary i'm like well then vote for jill stein that's what we're doing and they're like who's that Right. We well, don't I don't is. think she was able to. <laughs> well, you know, granted, she didn't get a lot of publicity in a lot of places, but I think Pennsylvania was one of the states she was not allowed to be on the ticket for. Right. But this wasn't a Pennsylvania that I, a Pennsylvanian I was talking to. But this is just the general yeah. like lack of knowledge, lack of inter understanding, lack of education. You know, people don't know how to spell. They don't know how to. They don't know what words mean. If I said, "Look, this is applied psychology techniques," all of these, you know, the bombings of the fireworks, and then of course the gunshots. This is all trauma based mind control I would I would probably take a I would guess that you know maybe the CIA is behind it or you know the Department of Defense or something it's really no big deal they're really just trying to get in your head and traumatize you they would just be like I don't know what you mean I think it's a black person <laughs> shooting a gun and I'm like no. it's, it's a drug it's, it's trauma-based mind wrong. control yeah like that's what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So people here. Are just, uh, okay. Well. All right. Know. Enough of that. But, um, <laughs> it's really hard. To it, it, it is hard sometimes. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think that that's the also the experience you know that a lot of people are having online and and in social media because there are a lot you know there are a lot of people uh, that 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 again they 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 operate the same way that you're describing. So yeah. we know these people in real life and online. And, um, but a lot of people's experiences with these kinds of, um, 
uh, individuals is, is, is similar, you know, it's all across the country, in fact, around the world. But I think, you know, in the United States, we have been experiencing a decline in education for the Who's, last 30 years. Have we ever? You know, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, y you and I kind of made it through <sighs> before it started really, you know, right. before the windows started closing. Right. And, um, I you mean, know, can you imagine? No. It's going to literally be like living in idiocracy, guys. Well, you know, like, the, it really the, is. The thing is, is anymore, you know, like we've talked about in our videos, <laughs> and, and Allison talks, and Allison McDowell talks about it. It's like, you know, this is going, going to be education that's that's not based on literacy or thinking or critical thinking of any kind. Um, it's basically going to be um, a, a series of short experiences. Or learning about an experience, and then you what you get instead of a grade, or instead of like writing a paper, and then you know, or a book review, or whatever it is you you know we used to be assigned, you get a badge, mm -hmm. and it, that little badge is a, a little digital like image. You it's know, like graphic. getting to the next level. I'm sorry, of Candy don't Crush. don't don't. That was not that. Was, Ignore that, what I just oh, did. That don't is worry not, about that. that I think not, people are beyond that because this is, Trump like, is no longer president. Right. So well, people have like forgotten all those stupid hand right, signals. Right, right. That was which not were intended. Not, yeah. Which are literally just conspiracy theories. Like, if you saw somebody making a hand signal, there is no such thing as the Illuminati. There are no such thing as baby eating Luciferians. Right, exactly. You know, but people aren't weeding out the, not the trying corruption. To trigger. Anyway, I'm not trying to trigger anyone. All I'm trying to say is, is there will be you know, graphics that will represent, you know, I did this. Right. And that's basically, uh, you know, I did this at, is, is, the, is the type of education everybody's going to go. Well, yeah. it's like the feeling you get when you get to the next level of Candy Crush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically. That's all a child's education and, and a person's life. Yeah. It's behavioral driven. And, and yeah. It's like or you get a nudge. Mm -hmm. It's cast some sting. Right. You know, it's all and, and about. Game, and gamification, right? It's all about nudging people into mm -hmm. positions where and they're just having we're basically just we're basically players on the board <laughs> and the yeah. investors yeah. are like okay julia collins and in, in you know in regional what what region are we in the in northeast. the northeast region okay you need to move left up you know what i'm saying or mm -hmm. right down or whatever like we're just we're <laughs> yeah that's all it is. It's just behavioral driven and nudge driven. Yeah. You have no autonomous will of your own. Like you think you do, but you yeah. don't. <laughs> I um, mean, at least I admit it. See, that's why we don't get censored too much is because we admit what's going on. And the thing about these motherfuckers is they're, the hubris is outstanding. They want you to talk about them. The minute you start talking about China, then you get deleted. <laughs> Because they don't want to share the the pop, they don't want to lose their popularity to China because there is no such thing as bad press. Right. You know. Right. Exactly. So, so we yeah. talk a lot about these markets. Right. And 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 what these you know capitalist uh, investors are doing to our lives. It's a behavioral driven market now. Mm -hmm. We're in it. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we like that because you're talking about us because, you know, it's like. There is no bad press, you know. They love right. it. I know they do. They, they love do. it, so they they like it. And yeah. the minute you start talking about how it's it's somebody else that's doing this to us, well, they don't like that because they don't want to share the the, the glory. The glory <laughs> with anyone, so they take they take you down for that. So don't do that anymore. Right. I mean, it's that simple, right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, it looks like we're getting to the end of the. Program. Of the podcast, yeah, right. but um, we're gonna we're gonna end with a video um, that basically also illustrates what's going on. So <laughs> this this gentleman has been collecting mugs for thirty five years. So basically, you're him. You're him. And your whole life is in this room. And your and, whole life is in the room. And COVID. COVID is what, is happens, what happens after. And the government and the state and the corporations are what are what are happens. basically what happens. So enjoy. <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> we'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this collection represents 35 years of my life. Oh, careful. Our journey begins with this mug. Dave, the microphone. Whoa.
book of hours are artists here to empower and embolden your response to the constant negative sound bites that attack your news and social media feeds. In order to continue making the video essays and art you've come to enjoy, we need your support. Make a one-time donation or become a patron. Thank you.